Uh, hello, good afternoon. I am Jennifer Allen Barron, Arts Education Director. I am Thomas Tran, Grant and Finance Assistant. And we're here today from the Oklahoma Arts Council to give you all a little bit of information about our grants program, how our grants work, and um, to walk you through the steps on, on applying. So a little bit about our agency. The Oklahoma Arts Council is a state agency. Our mission and our vision are listed below. We exist to support arts, the arts sector across the state. And one of the primary ways that we interact with um, organizations is through our funding and our granting mechanisms. Um, we fund different kinds of not-for-profit organizations, and you can see those listed below. So you see nonprofits, um, city, county, tribal governments, libraries, schools, and universities. And we have a special grant category that is just set aside for alternative education school sites. Arts and Alternative Education is the name of this grant program. And here are some of the kind of nuts and bolts details about it. Each alternative education school site in the state is eligible to apply for up to two grants per year. Um, and each of those grants has a maximum award of $2,500, bringing the total amount that a school could potentially receive to $5,000 per year through those two grants. We require a 5% cash match from um, all alt-ed sites that apply. And um, at, at this point, I do want to mention most of the sites and the organizations who apply to us are required to provide a one-to-one -one cash match. Um, most traditional schools are required to only provide a 10% cash match. For all ed schools, we've tried to keep that match as low as we possibly can, so that's why you only have a 5% cash match. Um, this grant funding can be used for, for costs including artist fees, artist supplies, and other costs that are strictly related to the project. The projects that, um, that we can support through these grants um, typically, we're looking for projects that emphasize hands-on learning, that emphasize student learning um, that takes place over time, um, rather than just a one-time event, something that allows a student to truly engage with the art form from class to class. And I'll talk a little bit, about, a little bit more about that later. So our Arts Council funding can only go towards specific um, expenses. What you see here is allowable expenses that we can fund and things that we cannot fund. So we are able to fund teaching artist fees, that includes artists in any discipline, any art supply costs that are associated with your project. They cannot be greater than 25% of your total project costs, and they must be consumed within the time frame of your grant application and your project. And again, these need to be specific, specifically tied to your project only. We can also fund any marketing expenses if you want to promote your project to your community or to your students or your parents or families. And uh, any facility, equipment, supply, rental costs associated with the project. Um, you can see a list of things that we cannot fund on the right-hand side, and this list is also included in the attachments that are in the handout. And those handouts will be um, on the OSDE website. Oh, they already are, so you can, you can click away. <laughs> All right, applying for grants is a two-step process. First, we will need to gain access to the Oklahoma Arts Council grant system. And the second step is actually submitting an application. So I will walk you through how to uh, request a login from our website. If you visit arts.ok.gov and just hover over the Grants tab in the navigation bar, you'll see an option for eGrants login, and you'll click on that. From there, if you have an existing login with a grant system, you can see the box where you type in those credentials. But if not, there is a link under the New to our Grant System heading, and you will click on Grant System Login Request Form. If you are unsure if you have login credentials or if your school has login credentials, you can always contact me. My phone number is right there on that page. After you click on the grant request form, um, you'll see this page. There's some text here, more information about our grant system and gaining eligibility. 
If you just review that information and review the Arts and Schools page of the website, so we include um, some more details about allowable projects that we can fund. Um, for our grant system, we designate two contacts per site. That's the authorizing official and the grant contact. The role of the grant contact is um, to be the individual directly overseeing the project and the grant application. In the case for schools, it's usually the classroom teacher, sometimes it's the principal or the school director. The roles of the authorizing official is usually the school director, principal, financial officer, or a superintendent. Uh, this role is designated to an individual who has the authority to enter binding contracts on behalf of your school or your district. And these two roles need to be separate, so they cannot be the same individual. If you have any questions regarding who these contacts should be or need some clarification, you can always contact me. Um, these are links where the arrow is pointing to that you uh, can download. These are two required forms that need to be completed before this process starts. The authorizing official form can be completed by your principal or whoever you designate for that role. And the state of Oklahoma vendor form can be completed by your school's financial officer or your district financial officer. If you scroll down a little more, we can skip through the additional required document section. That's only for nonprofit organizations, and we can go straight to the online form. From here, you will click on the school K through 12 selection for a type of organization. And we're just looking for some more general information about your school. Um, we're going to ask questions about what type of project or program you have in mind and what you want to request funding for. At the bottom of the form here is where you can upload your documents that you downloaded earlier, uh, the completed documents with signatures. And the bottom there, you can submit your form. If you have any technical um, questions or need assistance, my information to contact is at the bottom of the page as well. Does anyone have any questions regarding requesting a login? No questions? All right. Well, um, just a reminder that this form is not the actual grant application. What I just covered is a one-time process to set up your login. Once you have access to the grant system, uh, you don't need to go through this process again. So after you submit a login request form with all the required documents, we will get back to you within one to two weeks, and um, you will get your login credentials to the grant system by email. From there, you will be able to start your grant application. I'll turn it back over to Jennifer. Thank you, Thomas. All right, so as you, as you now have your login credentials, you can start to build your project and craft your narrative to apply for grant funding. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to select an artist to come to your site and lead a residency. I do get some questions about that, particularly from communities that are located a little further away from the metro areas. So I have listed here a few potential sources for, um, for finding artists around the state. We have, on our website, we have a teaching artist roster where we have about 60 professional teaching artists from different disciplines. There are also a lot of colleges and universities throughout the state. There are tribes and tribal entities that have um, artists who are affiliated with them. There are local arts organizations, including museums, theaters, local arts councils, and other types of organizations. Each of these can be a great resource for you to reach out to identify the kind of artist that would be best a best fit for your school. So once you have that artist um, you're, and you have your login, and then you are ready to write your application. And I know you're excited. The application has five basic parts. And I'm going to go over each of those in a little bit of detail. So you see those here, the budget, project description and artistic quality, learning merit, evaluation methods and access, and community need. And each of these parts only has about two or three, two to four questions per section. So they're not lengthy, but each of them, um, the panel reviewers are going to be looking for things. And so I want to give you a little bit of insight into what we're looking for for each of these sections. So first of all, the budget. You um, will start crafting your budget, and generally speaking, whenever we see applications from all said schools, the largest budget item, the largest expense would be your teaching artist fee. That will be the time that the teaching artist is spent in instruction with your, with your school and your students. 
Also, teaching artist travel costs. These are eligible expenses. And I mentioned this as well. Um, if you're looking at hiring a teaching artist who lives a little bit further away, we are able to reimburse the costs of artist mileage and artist lodging. So hopefully um, that might make it a little bit easier to bring an artist to your site that might live a little bit further. Um, we mentioned this earlier, but art supply costs are also an eligible expense. There's a few particulars here with art supply costs. They must be consumable items. That means that they must be um, used up within the scope of your project. If you have a painting class and at the end of that class you have you know, some watercolor sets and some paper left over, of course we're not worried about that. Um, the way we use consumable, paint, paper, brushes, these things are, are perfectly fine, but something like an easel or a kiln or a pottery wheel, those things are considered equipment that are permanent additions to the school. And th so those are things that we're not able to fund through supply costs. We can, however, if you need to use some equipment like that, we could pay for the rental of that kind of equipment. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, schools don't always have marketing costs. But sometimes if you have an exhibition of student artwork or a performance, then you might want to um, spend some money to post to print some posters or programs. And these costs could be eligible as well. Um, at the end of your budget question, there's a budget section, there's a question that asks, how will Oklahoma Arts Council funding be used? And we really need to see in this section that the funding that you're applying for will be used for some of these eligible expenses. If you have any questions about whether or not your expenses uh, may be eligible for funding, please contact me. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. A few of the ineligible items that we're not able to, to um, pay for include food, student transportation, or supplies that are considered equipment or permanent property. I covered that last one a little bit. Um, if your project includes student transportation, this could be part of your site match that 5% match that I mentioned before. So it could still be a part of the project. It's just not an expense that we are able to pay for. So the next section, this is section two out of five, your project description and artistic quality. The project description is kind of the who, what, when, where, why sort of section. Um, give us the nuts and bolts. Who is the teaching artist? What are the major activities that are going to take place? When will this happen? Where will this happen? Give us the idea of, give us a picture of this project at a glance. Um, be specific and, and thorough, but um, you, can, you can be pretty brief too, as long as we sort of are able to get the full picture. Um, as you're writing this, you might want to keep in mind that some of the folks who are reviewing this project may not be as familiar with your community or your school. So, give the reviewers as much information as they might want to know in order to make a good decision about um, whether or not to recommend funding for your project. Artistic quality is just a little bit deeper dive into the teaching artist that you have selected. And uh, there's a space here where you can give a about a one paragraph bio of your teaching artist to kind of outline their uh, major accomplishments and experience and also list their fee. Um, so for that fee, you want to list the total fee and, you know, however, however that fee has been determined. I gave an example here. Um, if you're paying your artist $35 an hour for 40 hours and then it adds up to a total number, um, just kind of how, how did you come up with that total artist fee? So just artistic quality, just information about the artist. Learning merit. So this is section number three. So um, the, this section, the first part of it asks, will this project provide student instruction, teacher training, or both? And your project can certainly include both of these aspects. The arts learning goals should be specific to the arts form. They're going to ask you, or the application asks you, um, what are the arts learning goals for this project? If you have a music project, you might think about um, the principles of music, learning rhythm, pitch, uh, learning specifics, specific vocabulary related to a specific instrument, but you want those goals to be as specific to the art form as they can. If you're able to address any um, standards from the Oklahoma Academic Standards, then that those are great to include here. This is also a great time, if you have that teaching artist, reach out to them and they can absolutely help you 
provide some language for your arts learning goals. Most of them can do this. They have you know, deep experience as educators. They can provide these kinds of goals all day long. So please um, feel free to use your teaching artist as a resource for, for that question. Um, also, hands-on time. This is something I mentioned before, too. We really are looking for projects that have a focus on student learning. So projects that have um, at least six hours of hands-on time per student, more is great, but we like to see those classes taking place on several different days, and not just a one-day event or a one-day field trip, but a project where the focus is really on the students and really on learning and engaging with the art form. So how do you measure student progress? Section four is evaluation methods and access. This section has two um, multiple choice sections and you can select from those lists all of the methods that you use to measure your student's progress. This multiple choice, it's very straightforward. And then they ask you at the bottom, we ask you, um, for some sample evaluation questions. So those are just a few questions from those, those forms that you've selected above in the multiple choice section that um, come from those forms and that give us an idea of how you're measuring your students uh, growth within that art form. So a few examples I listed below that are specific to those those art forms. Okay last but not least community need. This is a section when you can really make your case. Uh, tell us why. Why is this project important? for your school and for your students. What will they gain from this? Um, you know, this is something that I say all the time. We know that not every student will go on to pursue a career in the arts, but every student can certainly benefit from the from arts education and from the things that you can learn, from things like, like goal setting and um, learning to build skills and um, cr think creatively, think critically. There are so many benefits we all know that can come from arts education and, and all students can benefit in some way. So please give us a little bit of information here and you know, feel free to share a story that might, um, that might not fit anywhere else in the application but that might give us a, a better picture of why this project is gonna be important here or why it's going to have an impact. And at this point, I'm turning it back over to Thomas. All right, submitting your application. So you will be able to track the process of your application or the progress of your application from the main project page. Once you determine that everything is looking all right and you're ready to turn it in, just click on the submit button on that page. Um, we will need applications to be submitted at least 60 days before the start date of your project. So after you submit your proposal, um, Oklahoma Arts Council staff will be able to review your application. And if we have any questions um, or need clarification on anything, we will reach out and contact you. We review grant proposals at the beginning of every month. Um, the month of your application is reviewed is determined by the date that you submit the application. So the earlier you submit, the better. If your project is selected for funding, your school's grant contact and authorizing official will receive an email with an award notification. You'll get to see the feedback on your application and from there your authorizing official will log into the grant system and accept the award. You'll see the terms and requirements of the grants and you should keep that for your records and um, that's when you can begin your project. So this is where you get your grant funds, right? Nope. <laughs> So the final report is required um, after your project. So Oklahoma Arts Council is only able to provide deficit funding, which means that we cannot issue grant payments until the entire project is complete and all terms of the grant contracts are met. So how do we know when this happens? Well, when your project is complete, the grant contract should log back into the grant system and complete the final report. It's a good idea to um, before your project starts, log into the grant system and see what questions we're asking and what kind of data that you need to collect during the duration of the project. In the final report, uh, this is where we ask you questions on whether anything changed during uh, the project that differs from the initial application, and uh, if you have any stories to share, we do like to hear those. The final report is due 30 days after the your project ends and um, along with the online final report that you submit there are some additional support materials that we ask you to send in as well. We ask for some letters to legislators um, just asking you to 
write to your legislators telling them about the great program that you just had, um, the impact it had on your students, and just mention that you did provide some, uh, you did receive some funding from Oklahoma Arts Council to make the program possible. We ask for an evaluation summary, which should reflect on the methods that you selected in the initial application. Just a brief overview of, um, of what was learned during the project. And some marketing items and photos, which are optional if you sent out anything or requested some funding for marketing. We do like to see our logo being used, but again, it's not required and uh, photos of the application as well, so we get a sense of what happened during your project and um, seeing the scope of that. So payment is sent to the schools after the final report and support material is received and reviewed by Oklahoma Arts Council. Um, after you send in your support material through email, uh, we receive your final report online, that support material, and uh, we will take a look at everything if everything looks great. We will issue your grant payment, so you should receive that within two to four weeks after you submit that final report. Any questions? Yeah. Just to add one additional item about those final reports, you do have up to 30 days after your project ends to submit those, but you don't have to wait those 30 days. You could submit that final report on the very last day of your class. The earlier we get that, the earlier we can pay you. So I, as this especially comes in handy the closer that a project gets to the end of the school year. Sometimes people, people leave um, before payment has been sent out, and so the earlier we can get that final report, just the easier all around. All right, um, so those are some nuts and bolts about how to apply. I wanted to take just a moment to give you a few examples of some recent residencies that have taken place in all 10 schools around the state. Um, in, on the left-hand side, you'll see a mosaic that was created at Fame Academy in, in Comanche, and the teaching artist there, her name is Glenna Pace. She's been the teaching artist there for um, a good number of years, and she's brought all kinds of great um, projects to those students. And you can see one of those right there. Um, Okima Alternative Academy um, had worked with Janet Steyer for a number of years. Unfortunately, she passed away a couple of years ago. But she, um, for quite a few years, led a really strong photography project. Um, one year, the students were able to build their own pinhole, cam pinhole cameras. And um, the last time that they worked with her, they did this project using some alternative photography processes. Um, on the right-hand side is Nick Lillard, who went to Vista Academy and more for um, a few times, a few different semesters, and he works in large-scale collaborative sculpture um, using really contemporary art kind of methodologies to, um, to help his students build a project that um, brings the whole class together for a single work of art. So those are some that have taken place. A few more. Uh, Westville Alternative, this was, this was in 2015, but it was a drama project. They um, hired a number of different teaching artists, and they um, allowed their students to work through the entire project from screenwriting, um, directing, all the way until um, a final production took place at that site. Um, in Yukon, Kelly Hahn, um, that's the ceramics on the right-hand side. Kelly Hahn actually is a instructor, and um, she works at a at an organization that is called All Fired Up, where people can go in the evenings and, and fire a ceramics. But she was able to adapt her project um, to become a, a longer term um, instructional project so that she could bring the ceramics and also painting classes to the students. So, you know, they were really um, resourceful in identifying an artist there who would be able to work as, a, as an instructor. Um, in Mustang Academy, Abubakar Kamara in the center there, he's from West Africa and he brings drumming and African dance to schools and it's um, a pretty fun time. I've been fortunate enough to get to visit a couple and the students are fully engaged. It's pretty exciting to watch. All right, um, well that is our grant program and our grant processes in a nutshell. So uh, we've given you all of the information you probably could ever dream of <laughs> <laughs> wanting to know about applying for grants. Um, if you have any questions related to building a program or your application, please contact me. 
or if you have any questions regarding the grant uh, login request process, or if you have if you need any help using the grant system, or have any questions with the grant award or payment, then you can contact me. My phone number and contact information is right there. I do want to speak about the handouts that we have on the website. Uh, there's one page with grant support eligible projects that just outlines uh, things that we can fund, things that we cannot fund on the back. Just kidding, there's not a back. Um, the other documents, um, Oklahoma Arts Council of Grant Support for Schools Life Cycle just outlines the, uh, the timeline of grants applications, when funds are dispersed and everything. And there's also a step-by-step -step guide on requesting a login, what we covered today. The final document is a draft application for the Small Grant Support for Schools and Arts and Alternative Education. This is actually all of the questions that will be on your grant application when you log into the grant system. So it just gives you an idea of what we're looking for. Um, you could complete this form and send it in to us if you would like, and we can take a look at your application, give you any recommendations, uh, ask any questions to get clarity before you submit your actual application to the full panel for review. You. And again, uh, if you have any questions during this process, you can feel free to contact Jennifer or myself. We are here to help you every step through the way. And that website is actually the Alternative Education website on the resource tab. Okay. That those are actually on. Okay, on, that's on the OSDE website. Yeah. Alternative Education. On, under Alternative Education. That's where you can find those handouts Thomas just mentioned. Uh, does anyone have any questions right now? for us while we're live and in person? I was kind of watching too and I didn't see anything come through. They'll think of one. They'll All right, through. well, if you think of them later, um, <laughs> please reach out.